Hi everybody! I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. I've created this channel for my students and really all nursing students to use as a resource to help make nursing school a little bit easier and a little bit more palatable. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how to do a pain assessment on a patient. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it first and then I'm going to actually demonstrate it on a very special patient we have with us today. So the first part of the pain assessment is using the PQRST scale. Now I know some of you may have already heard of this. You may have heard it with an OPQRST. Um, that's fine. The O and the T, they kind of go together for me, so I don't necessarily use the O, but if you want to use the O, you can use the O. It stands for onset, but T stands for timing, and I think onset and timing kind of go together, but that's okay. P stands for provocation and palliation. So has anything made it worse, or does anything make the pain better? Usually by the time they get to you in the hospital setting or the clinic setting or wherever you are, some sort of healthcare setting, they've probably tried something at home first. They don't, most people don't just like rush to the hospital first, right? Because that would be very expensive if they did. So they try something at home first and it's unsuccessful or it doesn't give them the results that they want and then they make their way to the hospital. So asking them, what have you tried? Has anything been successful? And they could say things like, well, I've tried some medication, like some over-the-counter medication, like a Tylenol or an ibuprofen. Maybe I've tried like a heating pad or an ice pack. Um, and then you wanna know, did that do anything to help the pain? Some people think if their pain is not at a zero, then nothing has helped. But if their pain was a six and Tylenol brought it down to a three, then it did help, it did do something. It didn't totally uh, get rid of their pain, but it did help them in some way. So you wanna know that little bit of information about them before you can continue on with your assessment. It's gonna help you kind of develop your care plan a little bit easier. And then the other thing is, does anything make it worse? So some things that could make the pain worse, depending on where the injury is and what kind of pain it is, walking, moving around, changing positions, those are kind of common things that people will say, oh yes, this makes my pain worse when I get up and start moving around. It hurts my back, it hurts my leg, whatever their pain is. So you wanna know those questions, you wanna know the answers. Anything make it better, anything make it worse, because that's gonna help you in your plan of care for this patient. The next thing you wanna know is the quality of the pain. So how would you describe your pain to me? Now, a lot of times patients will have a hard time with this, when you ask them this question, they'll kind of say, um, well, it hurts and it's my leg and it's kind of over here. Okay, yes, that's good. So what you wanna know is you wanna use some descriptive words. So if they're not giving you those words, prompt them with those words. For example, so how would you describe your pain? Is it burning? Is it stabbing? Is it throbbing? And a lot of times that will like, a light bulb will go off in their head and they'll go, oh yeah, yeah, that's the word. It's a throbbing pain. I have a throbbing pain in my head. So using those descriptive words, kind of giving them as like little uh, hints for them and they'll pick up on it and then they'll be able to describe their pain better for you if they're not doing um, a very good job of it to begin with. The next letter is R. So with R, we wanna know, does the pain radiate anywhere? Radiating pain is pain that starts somewhere and then goes somewhere else. So let's say I have a pain in my elbow. I've hurt my elbow, okay? And it radiates to my hand and my fingertips. So you're gonna wanna ask the patient, where is your pain located, the site of injury, and then does it go anywhere else? Does it radiate anywhere else? It's really important that you don't get radiating pain and referred pain mixed up. I know they both start with R. So I just wanna talk just a sec here about what referred pain is. Referred pain is when you're feeling the pain, when the patient is feeling the pain somewhere else, somewhere other than the site of injury or the area that should be in pain. A very common example of this is post-operative gas pain. So you would assume after an abdominal surgery, they would be having you know, gas pains in their stomach and it would hurt their stomach, but oftentimes they'll report it in like um, their shoulders, right? Um, in their back and their scapula. They'll say, oh my God, my shoulder hurts. Why? I didn't have anything done to my shoulder. It was my stomach. That's referred pain. So they're feeling the pain somewhere else. 
but on our uh, PQRST scale, we are asking about radiating pain. So site of injury, and then it goes somewhere else as well. The S on our PQRST scale stands for severity. So this is the one you probably already knew. This is what you probably are thinking about when you think about taking a pain assessment. We are asking them on a scale of zero to 10, zero being absolutely no pain and 10 being the worst pain of your life, how would you rate your pain? Now pain is a very, very subjective thing. Pain is whatever the patient says it is. Even if you're looking at them and they don't look like they're in pain, they're not acting like they're in pain, if they say they are in pain, then they are in pain, period. Okay, so the S is our attempt, I suppose, at trying to make something that is very subjective, objective, right? Quantifying it and giving it a number. So the pain scale, the zero to 10 scale, that is S, that is the severity of the pain. Another very important thing you wanna talk about when you're talking about pain severity is also their pain tolerance. That is a very individual thing, that's a subjective thing, and everybody's different when it comes to pain tolerance. So you need to know what that patient's pain tolerance is. If you're not quite sure, a pain tolerance is when you ask the patient, how much pain do you think you can handle? What is a reasonable amount of pain that you would be willing to endure without me having to do some sort of intervention like an ice pack or a medication? Okay, something like that. How much can you put up with, basically? And for some patients, they're gonna say, zero, nothing. I can put up with zero pain. And then some people are gonna be like, well, I'm quite tough, you know, I can put up with an eight. Okay, that's fine too. Um, asking them their pain tolerance, and that's gonna go hand in hand with their pain severity when you're asking them about that. Because if they tell you that their pain tolerance is an eight, and that their current pain level is a four, then that's pretty good, right? You probably don't need to do much to help that patient. Right? Or you might not need to do something as um, severe. Maybe we can do some comfort measures as opposed to a medication or something like that. So knowing their pain tolerance and their current pain level. That's for S, that's for severity. And then finally, uh, T is the timing of the pain. I said in the beginning that T and O can kind of go to, together, and I think they can. Um, the timing of the pain, the onset of the pain. So when did this pain start? So what happened to cause this pain? If it's like an acute pain from an accident, I fell off a ladder, I've broken my leg, so the timing started when I fell off that ladder, right? Um, if this is a chronic pain, pain that's been going on for longer than six months, they could say, oh, well, I got injured at work, you know, a year ago, and I've been having a back pain ever since then, and I've kind of gotten used to it, but I woke up this morning and I couldn't even move because it was so bad. So asking about the timing of the pain. And then asking the tempo of the pain. Um, so does it come and go? Does it come in waves? Or is it constant? You're always in pain no matter what. So how would you describe the timing of this pain? Okay, so now that we've kind of reviewed the PQRST assessment, let's actually see a patient assessment on our very special patient for today. Good morning, Mrs. Flintstone. My name is Andrea and I'm gonna be your nurse today. How are you feeling? Are you having any pain? Yes, I yabba dabba do. I was driving my car the other day and I think I stepped on a sharp rock and now I have a cut in my foot and it hurts really bad. Is there anything that makes the pain better? Or is there anything that makes the pain worse? Yes, I did try to take some medicine at home and I tried to elevate it and that helped a little but not enough. And what makes it worse is walking on it. Yeah, driving my car, it makes it worse. How would you describe the pain? Is it a burning pain, a throbbing, a stabbing? I would describe the pain as like a stabbing pain. It feels very sharp and it's like a stabbing pain. Yeah, especially when I walk on it. Does the pain radiate anywhere? Meaning, do you feel pain anywhere else in your body or just at the site of the injury? The pain doesn't radiate anywhere else. It only hurts at the part of my foot where I got cut by the rock. It doesn't hurt anywhere else. How would you rate your pain? So on a zero to 10 scale, zero being no pain at all and 10 being the worst pain ever, how would you rate this pain? I would rate my pain as a six out of 10 and I think my pain tolerance would be a four. So yes, I would like something for this pain. 
Does it come and go or is it constant? It hurts all the time. Yes, I would describe the pain as a constant pain. Yeah, it hurts all the time. All right, well, I'm gonna let the doctor know and see if I can get you some medication for that pain and hopefully you'll feel a little bit better after a while. Do you need anything else from me? That would be great, thank you. And no, I don't need anything else right now.